In this exercise, we remind ourselves of Drude's description of the longitudinal and Hall resistivities in two-dimensional electron gases. To this end, we consider the following microscopic setting. We uh, consider individual electrons having a mass m and a charge minus e um, to move in the plane of the 2D electron gas with velocity v. These electrons are subject to a magnetic field which is oriented perpendicular to the plane of the electron gas. We denote this field by b. And the electrons are subject to an electric field which acts in the plane of the electron gas in some direction which is still to be determined. In this setting, a Lorentz force acts on the electrons which is given by the familiar expression FL, the Lorentz force, is given by the charge of the electron times the electric field E plus the velocity crossed with the magnetic field. In addition to the Lorentz force, the electrons suffer from random scattering at impurities, at phonons or at imperfections of the lattice. Um, so if we try to visualize this, we have, uh, for example, locations where electrons scatter in the plane and the electron would uh, move in the plane of the electron gas from scattering site to scattering site and randomly scatter uh, through the system. Now in order to describe this random scattering we turn to an average or ensemble description of the electron gas where the velocity is now an average local velocity of the electron gas which we uh, denote as velocity at position r. Scattering is then described by a phenomenological mean scattering time tau, which gives rise to a local average friction force, which we call Fs, given by the negative mass divided by scattering time times the velocity v at a particular location r in the electron gas. The transition to a local ensemble description of course also turns the Lorentz force to a local average quantity. So also in this expression the velocity will now be a function of position and indicate the speed, the average speed of electrons at a certain position in the electron gas. Having these two forces we can now set up the classical equation of motion for electrons in the electron gas, Newton's equation, which reads in our case m, the mass of the electron, times the acceleration v dot at a particular location r is given by the forces, meaning the Lorentz force being the negative uh, elementary charge times the electric field plus the velocity across the magnetic field um, plus the friction force which is the mass of the electron divided by the scattering time tau times the velocity v. In a steady state situation the local average velocities in the electron gas do not change in time so this acceleration term is zero so for steady state conditions we can set this expression to zero. Now in order to uh, work out a relation between the electric field and the current or the current density in our system, this is what we aim at um, for working out uh, the resistivity tensors, um, we need to replace the velocity by the local current density. 
So we need a relation between the local current density, J of R, and the velocity V of R in the electron gas. And we take this from kinetic theory to be the charge of the electron times the local sheet density of electrons times the velocity V of R in the system. So from this relation it follows that we can replace the velocity in the equation of motions by the expression V is given by minus 1 over uh, the charge times the sheet density times the current density J. So the next step is simply to insert this expression into the equation of motion and extract an expression for the electric field. Um, that's a relatively easy exercise. We find that the electric field E at a particular location R is given by the mass divided by the sheet density times the elementary charge squared times the scattering time tau times the current density J at this particular location R plus a second term which contains 1 divided by the elementary charge times the sheet density times current density at R cross product with the magnetic field B at position R. Now looking at this expression we see that the in-plane electric field has two components. One is parallel to the current, that's the first component. Let's call it E parallel because it's parallel to J. And the second one is perpendicular um, to the electric field. That would be this term, which we call E perpendicular, perpendicular to J. Now correspondingly, the relation between electric field and current density is given by two resistivity coefficients. The first one is called the longitudinal resistivity. We call it rho L. It's the proportionality constant between the electric field and the current density of the longitudinal part. So it consists of the mass divided by the sheet density Ns times elementary charge squared times the scattering time. The second uh, resistivity component um, is the transverse resistivity, which stems from the second term here. Um, we call it the Hall resistivity, rho Hall, given by 1 over the elementary charge times the sheet density of the electron gas times the magnetic field magnitude B at a particular location. We see that the longitudinal resistivity rho L is independent of magnetic field while the Hall resistivity is proportional to magnetic field. So it will give rise to a linear dependence of the Hall resistivity from the applied magnetic field. We also see that due to the fact that we have these parallel and perpendicular components of the electric field relative to the current density vector, there is an angle between E and J. And this angle is called the Hall angle. The Hall angle theta Hall is defined by the relation that the tangent of theta H is the ratio between the perpendicular component and the parallel component of the electric field, which gives the expression elementary charge times scattering time divided by the mass times the magnetic field B. 
So we've seen in this, uh, when, when we solve this problem, that there are two main ingredients for um, the Drude model. First of all, there's the free motion of electrons under the influence of electric and magnetic fields, giving rise to a Lorentz force. And second, there is the scattering term, which on average gives rise to a restoring force, a scattering force or um, frictional force, which is proportional to velocity. Inserting these two forces into Newton's equation of motion gave us the equation up here, which um, was solved for the steady state when all velocities are constant in the system. And we made a relation to the current density using this relation from kinetic theory, which relates the current density and the velocity. Now, putting these things together, we arrived at the expression for the electric field, which we found to have two components, the intuitive parallel component, which we call longitudinal resistivity, um, which depends crucially on the scattering time. So the stronger the scattering in the system, um, the larger will be the longitudinal resisti resistivity. And we have the second contribution, which is less intuitive, perpendicular to the current. There is a, an electric field component that is proportional to magnetic field and inversely proportional to the density um, in the 2D electron gas. So these two expressions are very important in practice for um, evaluating or determining, measuring the sheet density NS, which is usually extracted as the um, from the whole hall slope, the slope of the hall resistivity, and uh, for determining the scattering time. So once we know the density, we know the density also for the longitudinal resistivity, and when we measure it and we know the mass and of course we know the elementary charge, we can determine the scattering time tau in the system. There is one addition I would like to make uh, at this point concerning the relation between electric field and current density. You see that the way we wrote down um, the relation here is a complete vectorial notation, which would be valid everywhere in the electron gas. And uh, in some cases, it is very useful to express um, this relation in Cartesian components of the vectors. So you see this written up here. The electric field has the two components, Ex in x direction and Ey in y direction. And these components of the electric field are now related to the components of the current density, Jx in x direction and Jy in y direction, via a matrix. And if you now would write down this vector equation in matrix form, then you would find that the longitudinal resistivity appears on the diagonal, while the Hall resistivity appears on the off-diagonal sides of this matrix. This whole object is called the resistivity tensor of the two-dimensional electron gas. <laughs>